Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today we are continuing our study with the cells. Uh, so we started with the cell and now we are studying the basic chemistry just to understand the cell more specifically, more different kinds of functions that are based on the chemistry. Uh, so now, like uh, as you know, like uh, all of the characteristics of a cell depend on the molecule it contains. So the question arises: like, what is a molecule? So a molecule is a cluster of atoms held together by a covalent bond in which electrons are shared rather than being transferred between atoms. So this is the molecule. So you we studied atoms. So like now, two atoms when they are together, that makes a molecule, a cluster of atoms. That's as simple as that. All right. So the cluster of molecules held together by covalent bond. So now the question is like, what is what is the covalent bond? So the covalent bond is which in which electrons are shared between the atoms rather than being transferred. So for example, let's see the picture as you see in this picture, like this is a, just the simplest form of the atom. That's a hydrogen atom. So there are two hydrogen atom that has you know one electrons and so when they come together and when they share their one pair of each electron together that is a covalent bond so like two hydrogen atoms are attached by together and make a hydrogen molecule that's that you can see in this picture and like uh, it cannot it should not be like too close are very too far so it should be like perfect so that length is called the bond length and just the right amount so that the attractive and the repulsive forces are in balance when the nuclear are separated by a characteristic distance so that is the bond length right. so in the same way like as you can see in the in the picture like the table shows like whereas an hydrogen atom can form only a single covalent bond because it has just one electrons on both sides so it just forms single covalent bond uh, other common atoms that form covalent bonds in cells that's we're specifically talking about in cells we are not studying chemistry so uh, the other common atoms that form covalent bonds in cells are oxygen nitrogen sodium potassium as well as all the important reasons so carbon can form more than one single covalent more than one covalent bond so like for example as you can see in the you can see in the table like oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell so like in order to complete its outer shell uh, oxygen need two more electrons so when oxygen acquires two extra electrons so it is more stable by sharing with other atoms. So oxygen can share with any other atom and acquire two more electrons in the outer shell and that it will have, instead of six, it, it will have eight electrons and it will complete its outer shell. And is therefore forms of two covalent bonds. So, and then like, for example, the same as nitrogen with five, as you can see in the table, nitrogen with five outer electrons form a maximum of three covalent bonds. While carbon, which has four outer <coughs> electrons forms up to four covalent bonds they're sharing four pairs of electrons so that's so on it depends on the mm, on the atoms that has the electrons in it when the atoms joined by the single covalent bonds belong to different elements the two atoms attract the shared electrons to a different degree so like for example covalent bond in which electrons are shared unequally in this way are known as polar covalent bond so like for example like if one atom has like two electrons and then the other atom has like three electrons so they don't have equal amount of electrons so one will be sharing like one electron the other will be sharing like three electrons and then it creates a positive and a negative so as we did like we know when the atoms joined by a single covalent bond belong to a different elements the two atoms usually attracts the shared electron to different degrees so that means like covalent bonds in which electrons are shared unequally in this way are known as polar covalent bonds so like what is a polar structure so it is in which a uh, positive charge is concentrated towards one end of the molecule and that is called positive pole and the negative charge is concentrated toward the other end of the molecule that is called negative pole
right like uh, for example oxygen and nitrogen attract electrons relatively strongly whereas an hydrogen atom attracts electrons relatively weakly because of the relative differences in the positive charge of the nuclei that is of like carbon that has like carbon oxygen nitrogen and hydrogen has so depending on the electrons now, atom of a carbon and an atom of a hydrogen contrast attract electrons more equally. Thus, the bond between the carbon and hydrogen is relatively nonpolar. There are different types of covalent bonds. So, like single covalent bonds are uh, what are single covalent bonds? Like one donated by each participating atoms that we see that is uh, hydrogen. Double bonds. So, four electrons can be shared to coming from each participating atom. So, that is called double bonds. Like both have four electrons and they both are sharing two, two atoms. Double bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds because like if it's single bond like it can rotate really smoothly but if when it's like double bonds it has a restriction in its rotation. Right? So when the atoms joined by single covalent bonds belong to a different elements that we share. So we saw this about the covalent bonds. Now what now there is different there is another type of bond as well that is called ionic bond so what are ionic bond so ionic bond are usually formed between atoms that can attain a completely filled outer shell most easily by donating an atom so donating an electron to or accepting an electron from another atom rather than by sharing so in cold bonds uh, electrons are shared but in ionic bonds electrons are donated and it's not shared. So we'll see an example. Uh, like a sodium atom can achieve a filled outer shell by giving up the single electron in its third shell. By contrast, a chlorine atom can complete this outer shell by gaining just one electron. So a sodium is donating one electron. Too. So when an electron jumps from a sodium to chlorine, both atoms become electrically charged ions. The sodium atom that lost an electrons now has one less electron than its proton so to its nucleus is therefore a net single positive charge so whereas the chlorine atom that gained an electron has one more electron than it has protons and has a single negative charge because of that opposite charge is the sodium and a plus that that's why we call it an a plus and cl minus ions are attracted to each other and are thereby held together by an ionic bond thus positive and negative charges both attract together and the sodium and chlorine are attracted and held together by the positive and the negative ions so that that bond is called an ionic bond ions held together solely by ionic bonds are generally called salts rather than molecules if the if the atoms are joined with the covalent bonds it is usually called molecules it is called molecules when atoms are joined by covalent bonds it is called molecules when atoms are joined solely by just an ions they are called salts rather than molecules. and you can see in this picture as well like the sodium and the chlorine how they come together donate the electrons and then they become NaCl, the sodium. Uh, because of the favorable interaction between the ions and the water molecules, which are polar, you know, the water molecule H2O is a polar. It has, uh, we study about the polar covalent bonds, it has charges as well and the ions definitely has the charges. So like many salts, including NaCl, are highly soluble in water. That's why salts are highly soluble in water. They dissociate into individuals such as like when they are dissolved in water, they dissociate like sodium is separated, chlorine is separated. It's surrounded by a group of water molecules. Positive ions are called cations and negative ions are called anions. Uh, small inorganic ions such as sodium, Na plus, Cl minus, chlorine, potassium, calcium, Ca2 plus play important parts in many biological processes including the electrical activity of the nerve cell that's why we need to study this so when we study the nerve cell and the conductivity we will understand more clearly if we don't right so this was a study of ionic bond and now we'll see non-covalent bonds 
So in aqueous solution, ionic bonds are 10 to 100 times weaker than the covalent bonds that hold atoms together in molecule. But this weakness has its place. So much of the biology depends on specific but transient interactions between one molecule and the other. So the biology depends on that. So one bond. So this association are mediated by no non-covalent bonds. So one molecule, the, the interaction for, between the one molecule and the other molecule. This interaction when two molecules are together, it is mostly associated or mediated by non-covalent bonds. Uh, ionic bonds that held together, that hold together the sodium and the chlorine and in a salt crystal are a form of non-covalent bond called an electrostatic attraction. So the ionic bond that hold together the sodium and the chlorine and it's in a salt crystal you're talking not just one separate salt, but a salt crystal are form of a non-covalent bond. And uh, they are attracted just because of an electrostatic attraction. So the electrostatic attraction are strongest when the atom involved are fully charged mm -hmm. like sodium and chlorine, but a weaker electrostatic attraction also occurs between molecules that contain polar covalent bonds. So the polar covalent bonds are thus extremely important in biology because they allow molecules to interact through electrical forces because they have a low electrostatic attraction. So they can interact with each other. So that is why the polar covalent bonds are really important in the biology. Uh, and any large molecule with many polar groups will have a pattern of partial positive and a negative charge on its surface. And when such when such a molecule encounters a second molecule with a complementary set of charges, the two will be attracted to each other by electrostatic attraction, even though water greatly reduces the attractiveness of these charges in most biological settings. So when present in large numbers, however, weak non-covalent bonds on the surfaces of large molecules can promote strong and specific binding. Okay, so this was covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and non-covalent bonds. So these are just the basic things. That does not, we are not studying chemistry. So we are just trying to understand the basic chemistry like what are covalent bonds. When in the biology, we think about, we hear about that thing. So we'll know the, these are covalent bonds, these are ionic bonds because ionic bond has positive and negative charges. So that's why it is important to study that as well and the non-covalent bonds as well. So I guess we'll study further in the next chapter. All right, guys, thank you for joining me with her. <clears throat> All right, guys, thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next chapter. We'll study, we'll study, still study more about types of the basic things and then we'll go on in the details. Thank you.